uh, good evening, guys. Uh, uh, my name is Anand. I'm uh, from Anvis. Uh, and welcome to another, uh, hopefully, an interesting session on uh, Dogspot Facebook Live. Um, we, have a, we have another interesting topic here. I think this is more about uh, aggregation of uh, questions that uh, some people had. Most pet parents had, a lot of pet parents had about puppies. And I think this was, I think, also like a follow-up to the previous session that we did. Um, so yeah, so I think interestingly, I think we wanted to put this this like a little checklist together for uh, 20, 10 questions that you guys should ask on your puppy's first day home, um, right? So great. So I think Sapna, hello, Rohit, hello, Mona Lisa, hello. So excited about this one. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Mona Lisa. I think uh, hopefully, I think that the the tips that I have to share will will help um, some of you. Uh, Subramanya, hello. Damayanti, thank you for bringing the show. Absolutely, Damayanti, I think the pleasure is really ours. Uh, thanks to Dogspot for for setting this such a huge platform, and you know, just so many people join in. Um, I mean, I think it's a really nice platform where we can share our experiences, and uh, uh, you know, pet parents can also benefit from this. Um, uh, so just waiting to see if, if uh, more people uh, are joining in. I do see a lot of people are joining in. So hello, guys. Good evening. So just to sort of reiterate for the guys who came in new, I think we are going to talk about um, like a very simple, sometimes it's very simple, but sometimes it can be slightly complicated. Um, Ten things you should ask uh, when you bring your the first uh, on the first day you bring your puppy home. What are the 10 things that you should watch out for? perhaps question that most people have asked us. Um, like I was saying, this is mostly, uh, we are curating these questions from uh, from experiences, right? The, the question that you guys are asking through the um, through the dog spot uh, Facebook Live that we have been doing. Uh, so a lot of questions have been coming in. So we thought we'll curate this and, and we will start off. So hi guys, uh, Rosalind, hello, Venu, hello, Namrata, hello, Sapna says very helpful for puppies, absolutely, Sapna. Uh, Rachel says hello from UK, hi, Rachel. Okay, um, I think probably we can start, right? Um, okay, so one of the first questions that we have known, uh, most people tend to ask uh, once they so this is a, and just to give some context to this right this is after the research if you remember we were talking about last time how to prepare the home for the little puppy um, i think so that is something so preparation has been done but still after the preparation when the puppy comes home d-day uh, right uh, when your puppy comes home then there are certain questions that runs through pet parents might it's, had, it's happened to me I'm, I'm sure it's happened to everyone who has bought in a puppy uh, lucky are the ones who didn't bring the puppy and they didn't have to go through this this stress and have adopted the bigger dogs. I love bigger dogs. Uh, but for the younger ones, I think there are some challenges. I think there's a little bit of paranoia in everyone's head, no matter how well prepared you are. So first question, right? And I think this is, uh, I think this is in no, uh, no different order in ranking, but just randomly I'm saying. First question is, uh, we have had this question saying, should I invite all my friends and family to meet the puppy on homecoming day? Um, which is basically, it's a, it's a very exciting, exciting time. Your puppy is coming home. You obviously want to share this bundle of happiness, no pun intended, uh, with everybody, right? Your, your friends and your family. Uh, so you would want to call everybody and make a big hoo-ha about it. And, uh, and I know personally people... Uh, there have been pet parents who have done uh, this whole traditional arti thing that we do when welcoming, um, I think, you know, welcoming guests or welcoming new people or, or, or uh, uh, so is it a good idea to have, you know, friends, family come in when you, when you bring your little puppy home? My personal opinion, no. Um, and I also try and give some logic uh, or, or uh, you know, what I feel, why we shouldn't. See, your puppy is coming in from a different home or if you have adopted the puppy from some place, has obviously, you know, has is a different setup. You know, everything has been different. Everything has, you know, is changing when he or she comes to your, your home. 
the last thing you want to do is overwhelm this little one with so many people right friends family coming everybody trying to touch the puppy everybody trying to pick the puppy everybody is like kuchi going over it oh so cute so cute blah blah and you know doing the imagine that puppy um, this is uh, this is very similar to uh, and if i can take uh, you know like how we do with with little kids also right when you meet in in functions um, you know what do we do when we see kids everybody is jumping on the kid and you know pinching their cheeks and saying oh you're grown so tall or oh, you're looking like this and and blah blah have you know when you ask the kid the kids hate it right i don't think any kid has ever enjoyed getting that kind of an attention from you know so many different people in a strange strange environment right so um so for me if you ask me i think the first day should really be like a calm kind of a thing you bring the puppy in no fuss no mess bring the puppy in let the puppy settle in there are a lot of things that the puppy is processing at this point in time new home new people new environment new smells new sounds everything is new the last thing you want to do is overwhelm the puppy with like all kinds of people coming in and jumping and you know trying to you know cajole the puppy and pick up the puppy and all that so should i first question should i invite all my friends and family to meet the puppy on homecoming day uh my answer to that would be no please don't do that um at least in my personal opinion let the puppy settle in for the first few days before you can then by all means right then slowly start inviting because that's an important process in socializing the puppy so do not hold back on that but do it slowly not on the first day all right um second question um is that all right so so second question and this is uh, most asked question is should i take my puppy out and by out i think there are two scenarios where we have come across one i think people want to take the puppy to the vet uh, right to get the puppy sort of checked up etc uh, second is 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 an offshoot of the first thing which is basically oh the puppy has come home now can i take my puppy and have my puppy meet all the other doggies and the puppy is in my neighborhood and we'll go to the dog park or you know i will take my puppy to to the neighbors and you know friends and family should i do that answer to that um, <laughs> fortunately no at least in in my opinion i don't think we should do that reason being vet's place uh, i definitely think we should not take the new puppy into a vet's place uh, reason being see vet's place is a place where there is a lot of um, you know airborne water borne all kinds of infection right so as much and even the best of veterinary places although they keep swabbing cleaning and everything and they're doing the best to keep it it clear and clean of germs there is a very high likelihood that that there could be uh, you know germs that can go back and forth and you have to remember your little puppy is um, has not had has not yet uh, been exposed to the environment as much and has not really Uh, built an immune yet so you're exposing the puppy to a lot of things that the puppy can pick up from other dogs and you know from the environment etc um but uh, in cases right i think i will go with a disclaimer here in case of course right puppy has certain uh, you know if you run into issues medical issues right puppy has got loosies and you know you know whatever right if there are certain things that are there that needs to be seen by a vet please by all means you have to because then you'll have to sacrifice this but otherwise as a general check up i don't think it is required uh, should you take the puppy to go meet uh, take your puppy on the first day and then go to the dog park and where the puppy can meet all the other dogs in your society or apartment complex or neighborhood please don't do that uh, because uh, you know whatever all said and done first day is a very uh, can be a very stressful stressful day for the puppy and then you do not want um uh, them to like you know get into get into too many places one which overwhelms them too where they can pick up certain certain infections or or whatever so please do not do that you don't want to overwhelm the little one um okay so i i have a question here i think uh, we have uh, uh, mr sitaram and he's a very well renowned uh, trainer handler um sir he say he says what age do you recommend for training uh sir in my opinion i think i start uh with with puppies i start as early as about 2 months just basic right and which they probably don't even realize but uh, it's just recall come when called you every time you you just we just say 
come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. They start just getting voice association and, and sound association. And then I do see some puppies at about two, three months, they start picking up, sit down, stay, etc. So I'd like to start with, with training, not in a, in a, in a, in a professional sense, but I'd like to just like more like a bonding kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, earlier, the better, right? I think I, I've worked with smaller puppies as well, like indoors, obviously, um, such that, uh, they start building some bit of bond. Uh, Sohini is asking how much prone to germs and diseases are the pet parents once the puppy comes home? Uh, Sohini, that's a good question. Um, uh, so you're saying uh, uh, pet parents. So are you saying that uh, is there any chance of uh, um, any kind of of uh, germ spreading on to pet parents? Is that is that your question? Am I reading that correctly? If that is your question, no, no, I don't think you need to worry too much about uh, germs passing from the pets to the pet parents. Uh, I think I'm reading this, perhaps I'm reading this wrong. I don't know if you can clarify, I can, I can tell you. Um, and, um, but uh, it, it, I mean, uh, if you have a younger kid baby at home, I would suggest, I think I, I'm, I'm more pro puppy, so <laughs> to keep the puppy. Uh, slightly away from your kids because we don't want uh, anything picking up a puppy little one picking up anything from the from your skin kids um, uh, but I mean help me understand if I've got the question correct or uh, there's something else to it okay okay so any so you're saying yeah no no so if you're saying that uh, no no there's, there's there's I think very very little that you know you can pick up germs from the puppy to uh, to the to the humans I don't think there is anything like that and uh, maybe we are slightly bordering on medi medical, but uh, as per my limited knowledge, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but we can check with the vet. I think we do have a lot of sessions on dog spot. I think one of the vet sessions also, perhaps I would suggest to bring it up uh, and we'll run it past. But as per my knowledge, no, I think it's more about the puppy picking up anything from the environment than the other way around. Okay, uh, Manita, how do I introduce my puppy to my senior pet when the puppy first comes home? Uh, Manita, so that's a slightly, uh, slightly longish kind of a thing. Maybe here we are not, not really touching upon it. But let me see if you're able to cover it. I can probably give you a quick, uh, so hang around. So let me try and see if we can cover a few things and if I can try and connect a few things to how to introduce younger puppies to older ones because it's slightly... Uh, elongated. I think we need to do it step by step correctly because otherwise we could be putting either, excuse me, either puppies or the older ones a little bit at risk. But but hang in there. We'll try and see if we can within. If you have time, we will. I will probably touch upon that. Uh, so Hini says we adopted in India and wanted to check. Okay. Um, so uh, so Hini, if you adopted the Indi straight off the streets, is if that is the thing, or you adopted from NGO? I think if you adopted from NGO, again you don't need to really worry about. They would have done the basics. If you have adopted from the street, yes then perhaps it's a good idea to uh, go ahead and get your puppy checked by a vet. Uh, make sure that, you know, deworming and shots that needs to be done have uh, can be given and then you can bring in. But again, there is no there is no real danger of uh, germs passing from the puppy onto onto you. Uh, Chetan says, how do I socialize my puppy during lockdown? Can I take him for walks? Is it safe? Uh, I think Chetan, maybe again, again, this is probably a different one. I think we did touch upon uh, some of the older sessions of Dogspot, maybe somebody from Dogspot can tag the video. I think there was a video on uh, socializing a puppy during lockdown, socializing puppy during uh, dogs itself, socializing during during that time. I think we did touch upon that. Right. Okay. So question number three is, uh, and and I think fairly most asked questions is, what should I feed my puppy? Um, I think this is a fairly, uh, I, I think it's, it's a, this question gets asked quite a bit. Uh, I think we did touch upon this last time also in, in one of our sessions where we said, Hey, as a pup, when you bring in a puppy, what should you feed your puppy? I will reiterate this because this is one of the most critical things, uh, that, that can help, uh, help either settle or unsettle the puppy this is basically whatever food the puppy was used to having in the previous setup um, the the quantity and timings continue the same thing for the first two three days at least two days at least uh, so that you do not change 
um, you know, do, do not change too many things, but, you know, puppy doesn't have upset tummy and, you know, loosies, things like that. Post that, you can move the puppy into something uh, else. Like I would definitely recommend, um, you know, good dry food. Um, you know, you have starter puppies, you can start, but do not do a quick shift, which is basically do not say today you're giving maybe Cerelac and tomorrow don't move them to dry food. So it has to be, you know, uh, you have 75% of if, for example, if the puppy is on Cerelac, 75% of Cerelac, 25% of dry, I mean, or whatever, right, the, the um, uh, kibble, which is soaked, and then uh, you do a 50-50, then you do a 75-25, and then you move it into uh, completely 100%, right? So diet is very, very, very important because any quick change in diet, diet and water can really, you know, a, a healthy puppy can go from being nice and fluffy and, and healthy and playful to uh, being inactive and just can lose weight very, very quickly. So it's very important to keep a check on the, on the diet. Again, from an experience standpoint. Um, so we have two questions. Anjali ma'am says, what age minimum to bring a puppy home? And I think what is appropriate age? Gagandeep also asked the same question. Uh, uh, so my preference, ma'am, and I think uh, ma'am is so much more experienced, but uh, in, in my humble opinion, uh, definitely eight weeks minimum to 12 weeks. Um, I think my reasoning for that more so is uh, because of the whole, uh, you know, socializing that happens with the siblings and the mother. And, you know, it's so much more easier when the puppy comes home because a lot of teething issues is not there. You know, potty, potty training is they've already learned through the siblings and uh, mother and all that. And they are a lot more well behaved, if I can say that, if we can call well behaved puppies. I don't think there's something like well behaved puppies, but anyway um right um so so i will just take so feeding right so uh three first top three things is uh, should i ha have my puppy meet uh, friends and family on homecoming day my answer is no for 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 fairly obvious reasons we don't want to overwhelm the puppy uh should i take my puppy out to meet the vet or other people friends family uh, dogs in the community, um, you know, my upper, my friends, friends, dog, please don't do that. What should I feed my puppy? Whatever the puppy was already having, uh, continue with that and then slowly, gradually transition to a better meal. Uh, and this is another question that, uh, that keep coming up, right? Uh, when should I potty train my puppy? Uh, and, and I say this because, um, a lot of people, when the puppy comes home the first day, uh, they're like, okay, we have, you have free run of the house and, you know, puppies running everywhere and a lot of photos are getting clicked and videos are getting clicked and lots of oohs, ahs, ahs uh, going on. And uh, I have seen people personally also, right? I have seen that uh, when the puppy pees the first time or potty, it's like a very nice thing. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. The puppy is peeing in the hall. Oh, look at that, you know. But that quickly changes in 10 days time because the puppy is being in so many places and uh, the pee increases and it's not as much as ooh ahs as it was the first day. Uh, but if you really look at it from the puppy's point of view, there's absolutely no fault, right? I mean, when you allowed the puppy to do something the first day um, and then you do not say anything and suddenly if you're upset, that the puppy is peeing and pooing, it's it's not right, right? So I will say potty training start from the day the puppy comes in. Uh, make sure you have a place, uh, either you can do paper training, uh, which is basically, you know, you keep paper and you have the puppy pee on the paper uh, every time. But also if the puppy comes in from, from a reputed source and then they would have told you uh, what where the puppy pees, right? Usually after food, waking up, there are some certain uh, you know, they know the uh, process and they will tell you and you just need to follow that. If not, uh, I will suggest to keep a spot for the puppy. It need not be outside. If you have a home with a balcony, allocate one part of the balcony. Again, you can put paper there. Uh, you know, there are many things. These are all old school hacks. Um, you know, what I used to do long back was you have your flower beds, which is slightly raised. You just fill it up with sand and that can be your little... Uh, area where the puppy pees and poos. So every time puppy goes there, pees, it's also easy to clear that sand. You just remove that sand, you 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 throw it off. Uh, you know, because the reason when you do it on sand or mud or that kind of a surface, uh, later on when you start taking your puppy out, the puppy will start going to will pee and poo outside in, a, in an outdoor environment. 
Paper training, same thing. You start with paper training right from day one. The first P or P you should catch on the place you think that you want the puppy to be doing at least for the next month or so because you cannot take them out as uh, you know till the vac. I don't know. Depending on the age of the puppy, you know, the one more vaccination is due. At least the specifically the anti rabies is due. You cannot take them out. So make sure that um, you get them used to a place where they can um, they can pee and poo, and then that will just move. outside so do not allow your puppy to pee and poo even on the first day right do not it's not i mean as much as it is it's okay to give that leniency and say it's okay it's just first day right i don't want to put pressure on the little puppy uh, you're setting wrong expectation with a little thing because she or she will pick up on the smell and then will probably go for it and and you know once if they pee in a in a in a living room in one corner because they're so low on the ground for them anywhere else they can pick up the smell in anywhere else is uh is still okay for them to pee and poo so potty training uh, right from uh, day one um one more question is um um so one more question is uh, how much play versus sleep sleep time should i expect i think uh, this is something that uh, we do get uh, a lot people bring the puppy in and then you know there's after all the excitement you know wears down uh um, puppy is sleeping and then they get a little uh, perturbed saying oh my god puppy is sleeping for such a long time what do i do is it okay is it normal um should i should i allow the puppy to sleep should i wake the puppy what's happening right it's normal right it's absolutely normal allow the puppy to sleep as much as they can the more they sleep so that's that's just like babies right they will sleep sleep a, a, a very long time and i don't know the exact number of hours um but i am given to understand anywhere between 12 to 14 hours if they sleep is still is 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 okay uh, i mean that that helps them to sort of um, you know it it helps with 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 the building and you know and everything so it's okay so do not wake the puppy up and do not do this again you know going back to point point 1 uh, puppy is sleeping because some visitors came in and said hey i heard you got your new puppy home can we meet her? yeah yeah sure hey puppy wake up here somebody is there no no don't do that please let the puppy sleep let the puppy uh sort of um, you know get used to to the environment get used to the sleeping quarters everything right do not disturb so it's it's absolutely normal for puppies to sleep for a very long time so it's absolutely okay play the only other time the puppy will play is uh, you know after food you know puppy has got energy will play and then you will see puppies will and most of us who have had puppies i think that's the best part of puppies is they will keep playing and suddenly half way during the play they will just sleep like they will just flop <laughs> so it's like really funny uh, the first time i was also a little concerned i was like is everything okay with the puppy or what but then i realized that that's how they are right so they they get the, they get this little energy burst and then they sort of just flop and then they they sort of recharge so it's okay how much play versus sleep time should i expect you should expect a lot of sleep time very little play time do not wake the puppy up and make them play because you you felt like it let them sort of sleep uh, that's really good for them Uh, Anjali ma'am has uh, uh, another question do you think it's important to introduce your new puppy to a particular place crate for him to sleep uh, which will be the which will be the puppy place always absolutely um, and i this is actually uh, i have question number number 6 and and i and i have it written here um where should my puppy sleep right i think that is something that most people ask where should your puppy sleep personally i am a big fan of having uh, puppies used to crates um uh, and and we spoke about it i think in one of our previous sessions we spoke about uh, crates uh, again dogs are creatures of habit give them places where they can call it their own so crate is like a little den it's their little home they can go in uh, you can like if it's that mesh type of crate that we were talking of you can cover it with a cloth so they can go in there they can sleep put a nice you can you know you can put waterproofing bedding there or a turkey towel or something like that which is like slightly warm for them depending on on which part of the country you are in uh, uh or if it is very hot then you can um, like if it's a fiber crate you can still allow them you can just put a thin piece of uh, cloth and you can allow them there there should be a lot of aeration ventilation but get them used to their little home right we uh, we all have our uh, rooms that we retired to right or we have our bedroom we are not we don't really 
uh, like we we do have when it when it's night and evening we have to sleep we go into our room and we also have we have habits right so form that habit right from day one get the puppy to understand that if the puppy is getting bothered by kid should be able to go back to its crate or cage uh, and sleep again crates and uh, you know the YMS crates and puppy pens these are all not um, punishment zones right you cannot because a puppy peed or something and is being naughty don't put them and ban them there that's not the idea the idea is for them to get used to that place and start accepting it as a safe zone uh, not a punishment corner but i am a big fan of crates i have had my dogs all uh, used to crate it used to be absolutely uh, great especially when we used to travel because you could just take the crate uh, put it in and they would sit in there and we could go and we could live pretty much anywhere in the middle of nowhere we could go the dogs are absolutely comfortable because they have their they have their homes uh, we could go to hotels just put in the crate the dogs are in the crate so you don't really have too much trouble uh, especially when you're traveling but also inside the home for for the dogs uh, i think crate is like a like a like a big deal right i'm a big fan of of having having crates um, but do go through the whole crate training process. Uh, like I said, it's not a punishment thing. So make sure that um, slowly get them acclimatized such that they start feeling comfortable and safe going into their crate. So that is uh, that is what. Um, Shobit has a question. Do puppies have different personality like adult dogs of different breeds or uh, are they all the same? Related question. Uh, which is your favorite puppy? Uh, <laughs> uh, Shobit... Um, yeah, I think, right? Um, I think puppies also come in with different personalities. Uh, they do, depending on many things, right? It depends on breed, it depends on upbringing, it depends on environment. In a litter, you will see uh, puppies that that have extremes of, of uh, personalities, right? One is superbly outgoing, one can be clingy, um, one can be a little, little anxious, things like that. So you can see um, a variation. Uh, of course, they do have their personalities. Um, um, you know, they do have a personality. Which is your favorite puppy? Um, I think I don't have a favorite puppy, to be honest. I'm not being diplomatic here. I just like all puppies. I think the best thing I like about puppies is, I don't know if, if you guys have experienced, I think it's a smell, um, something very edible about that smell with puppies. Any puppy, uh, right? Especially after they have had their meals. Um, uh, think something about them so uh, I mean I love puppies of any 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 puppies is, is all right with me I, I love them I also like older dogs I also uh, like senior dogs so I think it's maybe it's not even a it's not even a question anyway um, I think question number seven should I carry my puppy how should I do it um, right I think this is a this is a fairly um, uh, I think it's not so common uh, because most people tend to think that because we are at a different height, puppies at a slightly uh, different height, right? We always tend to pick the puppies up uh, to to us, right? So we want to make sure that the puppy is here and then you hand it over to someone else. Kids pick up the puppies, etc., etc. Um, I'm not a big fan of picking up puppies, right? To be very honest with you, because a lot of things can go wrong uh, when you pick up puppies. Um, also, there's a way to pick up puppies, but uh, I'm not a big fan of picking up puppies. I would rather have the puppy walk and all that and call them and lead them along wherever we have to go, but not picking up every time. So bigger dogs, of course, right? So you cannot pick them up after some time. Uh, but uh, smaller ones, you can, but I still feel the more you pick up puppies uh, what happens it gives them a sense of uh, elevation and you know so that's why they say that uh, smaller dogs are more barkier than the rest i mean it also comes from what they were bred to do etc but more so because they like to uh, when you have a vantage point they like to look down and they like to bark 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 and they do, that they know that they're in safe safe this one so i'd like to lead them on ground itself i don't like to pick them up too much uh, leave them on the ground and leave them as they are how should I carry my puppy? If at all you have to carry a puppy, there are times when you have to carry a puppy, right? Let's say you have to take your puppy and you have to go, uh, I mean, you have to go to some place, the puppy cannot move or you have to go up the stairs or something like that. Um, you know, or what should we, uh, what should we, how should we do? Uh, there are different techniques of, of uh, carrying a puppy. I think one of, uh, one of my technique is maybe I can just show it with this, my little, um, so let's assume this is a this is a puppy. It's not really a puppy, but let's assume it's a puppy. What I like to do is this this 
front two legs i like to personally i like to put my hand uh, like uh, my the my the front part of it here such that the puppy is sitting like this right and then i like to keep them here such that the legs are dangling down uh, both the leg this side and that side and then back they have um, you know my arm to support and this side they have my chest to support and then i like to hold them as like this like uh, like this so in that way what happens is the puppies cannot really jump out uh, i have double layer um, their legs are hanging on either side right i like to do that again i don't like to pick puppies up like this right not with the hand not with this but from the underneath i like to sort of sort of pick them up so you're not hurting uh, their little tummies uh, you're not hurting any of their joints legs etc um, right but this is how i like to really hold like this is how i like 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 this <laughs> i don't know if this is if this is helpful i wish i had a pup here but um but i don't that's the best i could <laughs> in terms of a demonstration but maybe sometime we will get a puppy here and then i can i can show if i fed all that's a if that's required uh what's my eighth uh, eighth thing to do is uh, what surfaces are good for my puppy i think this is a very 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 important one uh, where people mostly i think we uh, most of the places have got smooth surfaces right which is basically you have i don't know wooden flooring you have tile flooring you have marble flooring everything is smooth surfaces and for most dogs smooth surfaces is not the best of surfaces growing up all right i think the experts will agree i think the most vets will also agree is that you need to uh, make sure that uh, they grow up especially when they're playing and they're having uh, you know rough play or your your um, you know working with them or you're training them and all that you don't want them slipping like that because then they will lose their footing they need a nice rough surface to do that i can give you wild ideas i can actually give you examples of a person who uh, they had in their front yard so this was not even it was actually an independent house in a front yard and with they had i think granite slabs put in for the cars to come in and all that and uh when they took in the puppy and then you know i was talking to them about this the lady of the house got so stressed about it that she called me one fine day and she said okay you know what we changed that whole granite we broke the granite and we replaced it with the you know the garden tiles which is like the rough one they changed that i mean i was obviously over the moon to see that people can go to such lengths to do this uh, but i'm not saying everybody have to break their tiles but you can do temporary structure like i think we were discussing in one of the older sessions was that somebody said can we put like uh, uh, yoga mats or coir mats um, right at least in 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 areas i know it look a little ugly but um, it's for a few months uh, and uh, the minute your puppy gets a lot of grip while running and playing and all that, so you don't actually also need to restrict the puppy while while playing and running but uh, it's good to it's good to have rough surfaces as much as possible especially growing up right once the, they have grown up then it's okay then you can go back to your normal thing uh, so i am i'm, I'm um, slightly anxious about surfaces uh, especially bigger dogs uh, they do have i mean they do have joints and you know it's it's growing up so you need to be really really careful and you don't want them like also with uh, uh, smooth surfaces what happens is that they will keep running they'll be doing their zoomies and then they will go and then they will land on 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 one of the edges and it's really not good right it can it can lead to so many problems so please be very very careful uh, try and allocate right again if you have rough surfaces like garden areas or um, places where there is like maybe terrace areas or uh, places like or if you have a smallish guard uh, balcony you can cover that balcony area with like i said you know either this uh, um, you know either yoga mats or you can cover it with this foot rest coir mats and things like that. but watch out puppies being puppies will go after your yoga mats and the coir mats and also don't leave them i don't trust these puppies they are very very sneaky um i think this is another question uh, uh, which says that uh, hey i got the puppy from a from from a breeder and uh, what about kci papers and microchip uh, when should i expect it um you know probably i will i uh, what i what i'm given to understand it does take some time for the microchip and the my, uh, kci papers to come in i do not think that it it's given on the same day uh, it's it's been a, it's been a long time since uh, um i had any puppies it's been a very long time so i'm a little out of touch but i think somebody can clarify but i do understand that it takes a process 
uh, I think it takes about two to three months, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, any breeder who's worth their salt will actually follow up and ensure that the microchip certificate is given to you, um, you know, uh, and the microchip is given. So uh, somebody who's saying, you know, uh, so, so, uh, but I don't think that the papers are available at, even if at three months, I don't know if it will be available at, at that point in time. Uh, but perhaps I can, you know, probably check this and then I can come back and, you know, we can, we can post this on, on the exact timelines. Right. And I have one last question. I think this may be my last question, which will be what all toys should I give my puppy? Again, in the excitement of bringing home a puppy, I think most people go uh, go shopping for their little puppy and then they end up buying like a whole lot of stuff, right? You know, stuffed toys to this toy, to that toy and God knows what all. Uh, again, when you give like a bunch of things when the puppy comes home the first day, uh, like something that is squeaky, something that moves, uh, you know, something that has got like like tug toy kind of a thing. If there are so many things that are there, um, uh, you know, again, it overwhelms a little one. So what you may want to do is just focus on like a few basic ones which is typically it could be something as simple as something that can engage their uh, mind and the whole uh, because they could be <clears throat> excuse me because they could be tearing so you may want to engage with things like that something that you can there are many toys that you can stuff uh, like semi-solid solid food freeze it and then give it which will also help with with the numbing of the gums um, so they're teething and they're wanting to attack and destroy other things is is much lesser and you can also have other toys that is mostly treat like treat dispenser kind of a thing, right? You put treats inside and then the puppy moves them. Uh, I mean, as they move around, uh, the treats fall. So it'll also keep them engaged uh, a little bit. It's a game, plus it also gives them some treat. It keeps them sort of uh, sort of engaged. Right, so, so that's it, guys. I think uh, some of the questions, I think I just, just quickly for the benefit of the guys who have joined in a little late, I just thought I will quickly uh, summarize this very quickly. Uh, question is, should I invite all my friends and family to meet the puppy on homecoming day? No. Uh, should I take my pup out to either meet the vet or other friends, um, you know, friends, family, etc.? No. Uh, <laughs> what should I feed my puppy? Same thing that the puppy was used to and then slowly transition. Uh, when should I start potty training? Right from day one. Do not miss that. Do not allow the puppy to say it's okay to pee today. It's very cute. Tomorrow you're not cute. Not fair to the puppy. Um, play. How much play versus sleep time should I expect? Uh, puppies will sleep a lot. Give them that kind of thing. Don't wake them up in between their sleep and because they have visitors and things like that. How should I carry my puppy? I did a very basic demonstration. Not the best but uh, uh, but if needed, that's the that's how you should carry the puppy. You can probably watch the video and give me some inputs on um, if it's all right. Um, how should I do it at all? The question is, should I do it? I think sh no, probably not. Please don't. Uh, please don't uh, try as much as possible not to carry the puppy and just leave them on the ground and sort of move them. Uh, where should my puppy sleep? Definitely should have a sleeping quarter, should have a place where they can sleep. You know, I'm a big fan of crates, etc. Uh, and, um, you know, so, so get them used to the, get them used to the crate and uh, uh, they will be okay. So you can move the crate also, um, you know, uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, KCI, KCI papers and microchip, I think I will come back to you in terms of timelines, but I don't believe that it is given the day the puppy puppy goes out because it does take time for it to go to, I think it goes to Chennai and then it comes back, but I can clarify that for you guys. What are toys should I give my puppy? Don't overwhelm your puppy with too many toys. Uh, just give them basic couple of toys and then you can keep adding toys. Just be sure that like we discussed the last time also is that don't give them any toys that has got things that can hurt them, right? Which has got like, you know, teddy bears that have got like those, um, you know, buttons and, and nose that have got those buttons and all because these guys can quickly uh, just uh, uh, swallow it. Uh, so I'm just going back to last one because we do have, maybe I'll just take five more minutes with uh, to Chetan. Uh, no, sorry, not Chetan. I think we had somebody who said, how do I... Uh, introduce my puppy to my senior pet uh, Manita. Manita said, "How do I introduce my puppy to uh, to my older one?" Um, you know, I think obviously when you bring the, I personally, this is my my way of doing it. I I don't know. There could be many other ways of doing it. This has worked well for me. 
Uh, see, first of all, I think you need to know if your older one is okay with having having is okay with other other dogs, puppies. Most dogs are generally okay with puppies because puppies go belly up and then they sort of expose, and then the pup, even even slightly not very social dogs also sort of tend to give up. They'll just ignore and then they'll go. But the safest way of doing this is to bring in like a barricade, which is like a baby gate or a puppy pen or something. Puppies remains in the puppy pen. Older ones remains outside. You have to give them enough time to smell each other through um, through a barricade. Unless, of course, like I said, if your dog is already used to puppies and you know is is all there, then you can go. Uh, you can perhaps go all out. But I still just to be on the safe side right? because if your dog is a big dog and the puppy is really small then you want to put them through that way they can first smell each other get the sense that each other are living in the same space uh, right um, and then slowly start leaving them out in um, in in short periods of time because you don't want puppies being puppies will puppy doesn't know this big dog and will just go and will start jumping at this one, standing on this one, you know, pulling the mouth and, you know, running after the tail, etc. Not all all older dogs are okay with that. So some will snap back and all that. So you may want to keep it under under constrained conditions. Slowly do that. Don't expect your older one to uh, uh, sort of just take in the younger one just because, you know, th that was supposed to be. Give them, give them enough time. Slowly you bond them together such that they, they get used to it. So you start uh, right, at the, and also make sure you give enough attention to your older one. Just because the younger one came in does not mean that you should probably. I know nobody will do that, but I'm just as a as a afterthought. I'm sharing this. So give enough attention to your older one, even while your younger one is is, is around and and stuff like that. Um, slowly, I think they will get used to. I think mostly puppies to older dogs, by and large, I think the ratio of them getting used to each other is, is quite okay. Right. I hope. Um, uh, there are no other questions. Uh, Subramanya, I think there's one last question. This is a bit beyond puppy. When they move to adolescence, some dogs pick up humping. We discourage, but any other matter. Subramanya, again, this is a this is a longish kind of a thing, uh, but it could be for many reasons. Hormones is actually one of the bigger reasons why if they start doing that, and then it becomes a behavioral issue, uh, and then after that you have to really look at separating those two. Uh, and all that, but uh, discouraging them definitely. Right? I think you should discourage them because it can lead to uh, slightly other things if it is not caught caught early on. Right? Okay, guys. Uh, I think if you have do have questions when you're watching the video, whenever you watch the video, feel free to leave your comment here. We I think we will check, and if there is anything that we can respond, we will respond. If you think this helped, or you know someone who has a puppy, probably going to get a puppy, looking to. Feel free to share this video as well in, in your different group circles, etc. Um, and of course, like I said, you know, anything is there, you can leave your uh, comments here. Okay, so with that, I think I will, I will take leave of you guys. Uh, thank you guys for giving this opportunity for me to come and share some, some, some information here. Um, I hope it was helpful. Um, so... Uh, if there are questions, let us know. But thank you so much. And keep tuned to Facebook live series. There are lots of interesting, exciting sessions coming up. And there's a lot of information sharing that's happening. So thank you so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.